Well, here's the stock ICOM 7300 fan. And the warranty is void. Are you sick of your ICOM 7300 sounding like a Mack truck driving down the street every time you transmit? That fan is really annoying. Enter the Chromax by Noctua. It's an NFA8 fan, just like the ones that you find online that everybody's ranting and raving about. Except for a few dollars more, why not get it in black instead of the ugly brown colors? And, if you want to go crazy, they even supply you with these different color anti-vibration pads. But, I'm just going to go all black. So let's step inside and see how the stock one compares to the new Chromax. Alright, here's the stock fan from the front. Okay, first thing you want to do is remove the bottom cover. Looking at the rear of the fan, you can see the red and black wires that go up through the back side of the chassis, right along here. So what you want to do is disconnect this plug right here for the fan. Now remove the four screws that secure the fan to the radio. Carefully remove the fan and separate the screen from the fan itself. And before I forget, this was the orientation of which the fan came out of the radio. It may look upside down. That's because the radio is upside down. But one special thing to note is as I turn the fan this direction, you should be able to see right there the arrows. So that indicates the direction and the airflow. And here's the new fan and its contents in all its glory. Here's all the little colored rubber feet and some screws. Looks like a, an extension cable here. So now let's compare the fans side by side. Here's the two fans side by side. Okay, so you want to compare the blade architecture. Now you can see the arrows, same rotational speed, same output on the airflow. So perform this fan mod at your own risk. Here's why. The stock OEM fan runs at about 3400 RPM at 12 volts. Now keep in mind that initially ICOM puts out about 10 volts to the fan to make sure it spins and then it settles down to around 6 volts. So while the fan speed may not be linear, we could assume that if 12 volts is 3400 RPMs, then 6 volts would be around 1700 RPMs. As for the Chromax fan, it puts out 2200 RPMs at 12 volts. So if you reduce the speed to 6 volts, we could assume it would be 1100 RPM. That's a 600 RPM difference. If you want to compare these two fans CFMs, the stock ICOM fan is around 42 CFM, whereas the Chromax is around 32. Now again, perform this mod at your own risk. If you run CW and especially ready, you may want to go into the meter section of the ICOM 7300 and definitely watch the temperature of your radio. Also make sure that your intake port on the top right and the smaller intake port found on the bottom of the radio are not restricted and that the screens are clean. Okay, here's a stock fan. I'm hooking this up to a 9-volt battery.
There is one difference with this black Chromax fan compared to the brown ones that are online. It's the wiring. Now, there are still four wires, however, they're all black. And they don't tell you on the box the schematic. But if you look real carefully here, you'll see on the connection itself, this number one. That's going to be the negative. And the one right next to it, number two, pin number two, is positive. Three and four, you can disregard. So apply your voltage here. The black wire will go to number one, the positive or the red wire will go to number two, and that'll go back inside your radio. Now if you notice, these two fans are slightly different on how the wires exit. This one, the new fan, it comes out of the top. There is room to bring the wires down here. But on the old fan, the wires actually exit through the side where there's an actually a hole or a notch for the wires to pass through. There's no notch right here. However, there is a very small hole right here. Also, this long extension that they provide you, you'll actually have no use for it. I tried to connect it to the fan and pass it through the side, but it just won't clear the body of the radio. And here's the new fan. So here, as you can see, I just used a small screwdriver and I pressed down on one of the pins and I was able to slide number one, the negative wire, right out. I'm going to trim this up a little bit, but actually solder this directly to that. Now one very important step, if you decide to choose this method, is to use the bottom hole and simply pass the wires through. Make sure it's facing the right orientation. Pass these wires through here, like so and then you can solder it up and heat shrink it, solder it, tie wrap, whatever you want to do. But make sure it's nice and neat and it sits right in here or else there'll be interference as you install. But this cable has to come through that bottom hole as it goes into the radio. So here's what I came up with. I took the positive and negative wires and I soldered them together. I put individual pieces of heat shrink on there and then I also put one larger piece of heat shrink on there and passed it through that small hole. The other two wires I was going to initially cut, but I decided to keep them and put some heat shrink on them. So I still have the leads in case I decide to repurpose this fan later on. So now let's put it in the radio and see how it sounds. Okay, now let's test out the fan with the included rubber isolation pads. Notice that these little pads have two little guides which go in the holes. Well, up here, we're going to have to cut one off where we pass the wire through.
That's how it should have come from the factory. Thanks for watching, guys.